Hi, my name is Holly Davies. I am a manufacturing engineer with Rolls-Royce and today we are going to talk about 3D printing and we're going to make our very own 3D printed jet engine together. So I hope you're ready. Let's go. Now let's have a talk about what 3D printing is. Some of you may know already, you may have seen it at school, but for those of you that don't, 3D stands for three dimensional and when we 3D print an object we're making the complete object up of lots of 2D layers so lots of layers built on top of each other to make a complete object. Lots of people have 3D printers at home and they print um, simple things like phone cases and um, up to very complex um, bike parts using a range of plastic material normally. In Rolls-Royce, we make engines for planes, trains and nuclear submarines. And we've started to use 3D printing, although we call it something slightly different. We call it additive layer manufacturing. And actually, this describes what it is a little bit better. So additives mean additive means to add. Layer is pretty, pretty self-explanatory, lots of layers. And manufacturing is to make something. So we are making something out of lots of layers added together. There are two main benefits of 3D printing or additive layer manufacturing in Rolls-Royce. The first is that we can take a lot of weight out of our products. If we make them out of the more traditional method, we might cut the shape of the part that we need out of a block of metal. And you can imagine that that's probably quite heavy still, almost like um, a paperweight. It's got, got quite a bit of weight to it. Now, if we 3D print that same part, we might be able to print it so that there isn't anything on the inside of the object. It's hollow inside because we don't really need that material there. Then it also gives us a weight saving. And in the aerospace industry, a weight saving on a plane means that we need less fuel to fly that plane and therefore it costs us less to fly the plane. So it's more sustainable and a bit more economic. The second reason for using 3D printing in Rolls-Royce is that we can 3D print some really complex and intricate shapes that we find it very difficult to make using the more traditional methods. And if you type 3D printing into Google or another search engine, you will often see lots of really intricate shapes like spheres with lots of cross members in them, all sorts of things. So the two main reasons for using 3D printing for us are to reduce waste and to make um, sorry, reduce cost and to make much more complex shapes. One way that 3D printers have been used recently, which has been very important, is to 3D print lots of face masks for all the people who are out working during this pandemic to try and keep them safe. So the face masks and the face shields, you will see a lot of people have been 3D printing those. Now in good Blue Peter fashion, here is a um, 3D printed jet engine that I made earlier. So today, in a few minutes, we are going to make one of these together. Um, you'll see that mine, you'll see in the video that mine is a little bit floppy on the, in the middle for some reason. But um, there you go, you can see it's quite small. It is the same basic shape as a real life jet engine. So the air will come in the front of the jet engine here. There's a little nose cone on the front. The air will come in here and then it gets squeezed down in the middle. We add some um, fire, some heat, and we compress the air a little bit more, and then it zooms out the back of the engine here. So the air is going in the front, through the engine, and then out the back. And you'll see the fan blades on the front there as well. The other thing that you'll need, I'll show you the, the full set of kit in a minute, but we're going to be following a set of instructions here. So a, either an adult or a responsible parent may have printed this off already for you. If not, now's the time to get this printed. And I'll see you in a moment. OK, here I've laid out all of the pieces that you're going to need to do this jet engine activity. The first thing is the sheet of instructions that your parent or maybe you have printed off the Internet. And on here, this is the build your own jet one. Sorry, build your own Trent 1000 jet engine sheet of paper. And it has all of the little pieces that are numbered laid out on here. You're then going to need something cardboard based to stick this bit of paper to. Now I have a lot of Amazon <laughs> parcels, which I'm sure your parents do as well. Um, and I'm going to stick this bit of paper to here. But if you don't have an Amazon box, you could use something like a cereal box or anything else that has a bit of structure to it. So you'll need something sharp as well. So either a pair of scissors or maybe a craft knife. For both of these, you will need adult um, 
supervision because they're sharp blades so be really careful with those and then you'll need something to do the sticking with. I have some um, Pritt PVA glue. What I would actually recommend though if you have it is the Pritt stick because I think this is going to be a bit too thick. Yeah, I've got quite a wide opening on here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put it into a dish and use a paintbrush to apply the glue to the paper, otherwise it would be really thick. So the first step is to apply this piece of paper to your bit of cardboard. So let's just move those out of the way. And that's it. And it doesn't really matter what your cardboard has on it, but I'm going to choose this end here because it doesn't have my name and address on it. So let's just cut those end bits off. Tricky, tricky. Test of your um, you'll find this easier if you've got smaller hands, I think. <laughs> chop, 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 chop. And this bit, chop. Chop, 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 chop. You don't need to say chop, chop, chop every time you use the scissors. <laughs> right, that bit there. And I'm just going to make sure that that's going to fit on there, which it is. Just try and tuck it in. Yeah, so just to make things easier, I'm also going to cut this down here as well. Chop, 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 chop. Move that to one side so you've got a nice clear workspace. And then, oh, I can't get that over. I'm going to put a bit of glue on the back here. So, do, 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 do. apply your glue however you like. The important thing here is to get the glue across all of the back of the paper though because you're going to cut all of these individual shapes out in a minute and can you see how small some of them are? So you want to make sure the back of all of it is glued um, and what I probably should have done is picked a slightly larger paintbrush. <laughs> Hang on a second, let's find a bigger one that might get the job done a little bit faster. Let's put that all over the back. Try and use as thin a layer as possible because otherwise your paper's going to get really, really wet and then you might find it quite hard to do anything with. So paint, 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 paint. go so I think I have about as much glue on my hands as I do on the bit of paper <laughs> but that's fine but getting messy is fun it's not a problem at all and then what I'm going to do oh it's very soggy is I'm going to stick it onto this bit of cardboard here trying not to get any glue on the top but it doesn't matter too much if you do because we're going to let it dry anyway so you want to try and make this as flat as possible. So I'm just going to get rid of all of the air bubbles out of here. There we go. Nice and flat. Mm, just rub gently. Don't rub too hard because you might rip the paper. But if you just give it a gentle rub over the top. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm making it dirty as I go. <laughs> you just give it a gentle rub. And then what we're going to do is just leave that a few minutes so that it can dry. You will also notice whilst you're doing this, if you've missed any bits, that looks like I might have missed a bit there, look. So I'm just going to put my gluey paintbrush under there, and paint a bit extra on so that that, actually that doesn't matter too much, but it might just make it easier when we come to start cutting it. There you go, so that's that stuck onto the cardboard. I'm just going to leave that to dry, just for a few minutes. Okay, I think that's enough time. It looks like it's still a little bit damp, but I think it will do it will do for now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start the cutting out process. So I think I'm going to try scissors to start with. If that doesn't work, I might try the craft knife, but I think scissors might be a bit easier for a bit of control. It says at the top here, please start with piece two, and piece number two is here. It's probably, is it the smallest piece? Mm, that might be even smaller, but this is the smallest piece here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut 
in number order. So after number two, I am going to choose number three, number four, number five, and I'm going to keep them all in line and in order, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's get cutting. exciting bit and we are going to make them into our jet engines. So we can use this image as a guide and there are generally four sections to a jet, en that you, jet engine that you can think of and we say that they suck the air in, so they suck the air in at the front, then they squeeze it down so the engine gets a little bit narrower in the middle, suck, squeeze, then they um, inject some fire into it basically, so the bang section is the really small bit in the middle and then they blow all of the exhaust air out the back so the engine gets a little bit bigger again. They suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So we know that the engine is going to go from bigger at the front, smaller in the middle and bigger again at the back and then we have the nose cone which are these bits sticking off the front. So if we start with piece number two and we can see from the pieces here that the nose cone ones are really quite small so they're going to make that little shape there and then we have the fan bits here which are much larger aren't they so they look like they're going to make up that bit of the engine and then we go from 30 down to 21 goes to quite small again and then we're going bigger and then small again at the end so let's give this a go let us start with part number two Put that there so you can see that and then I'm going to bring my glue back but I'm actually going to come back with the smaller bit make sure I've still got some glue in there which I have and I'm also just going to get a bit of the cardboard back to use as a base so that I don't put glue all over my table and then you what you're going to do is put glue onto the bit of the bit of the um part that has the number on the front, the front bit of it. So you're not going to put glue on the back of it, the cardboard bit, but you're going to put the glue on the paper. Oh dear, that was far too much glue. <laughs> you don't need that much glue for such a small bit. This will get easier when the parts get a bit bigger. And then we're going to pick up part number three, look, and we're going to stick that on top of part number two. That's just going to go on there. And what you want to make sure, this might be quite hard to see actually, let me just get it a little bit closer to you. You want to make sure that the part is right in the middle so that you can see the little bit of part number two there and we want him right in the middle of part number three and make sure they're stuck together. And pop those back down so number three is facing up again. Oh, they're sticking to my fingers. <laughs> and then we're going to take part number four. And we'll do the same again here. So we're going to put a little bit of glue onto the front of part number three there. And then we're going to take part number four. And again, turn it over and just make sure that those parts are in the middle as much as possible. They were quite tricky to cut out, so they're not perfectly round, but that's absolutely fine. Part number four. And then we're going to take part number five and we'll keep doing this. You can see what we're doing here is we're taking all the different numbered layers of paper and cardboard and we're adding them together and that was the additive layer manufacturing that we mentioned right at the beginning of this video look so it's building it up and you can start to see you can see the individual layers there and it's becoming a 3D structure. So I'm just going to carry on doing that so you're just going through the numbers you'll notice that there's a difference between the six and the nine look where the line is that means that if it's under that bit it's a number six and if it's under the pointy bit this is a number nine so we're just going to keep going add a little bit of glue onto the top there look and then stick that on there and check that it's in the middle so i'm going to keep on doing that you can pause the video here so that you can do it in your own time That 
I've just stuck on there is part number 20 and now you can see we've gone from the very first bit being quite small, we've gone bigger and now we're going smaller again and that's sort of coming in here to where it goes very small and hot in the middle of the engine. So I'm just going to carry on doing this. Piece number 39 is really interesting look, where all the others have been plain and had a number in them, 39 is actually the blades um, on the front of the engine. So they're the big fan blades that you could see when you get on your on the aeroplane to go on holiday. That's what you can see out of the window. Oh, it's gone very wobbly. <laughs> I think I might have to put a bit more glue in the middle of mine. I think it's got a bit of a weak, weak point. But you can see there, can you see how it's mirroring the shape? It's matching the shape of the drawing on there. So now we've just got the really fiddly bit to do, which is the nose cone. So I'm gonna... And what we have there is your very own 3D printed jet engine. How good is that? So there we go, have you all got your own little 3D printed engines? Here's mine, you've seen it already, but there it is. Now what you could do if you wanted to do this activity again is you could add some colour into it because at the moment we've printed the white paper off and we stuck it onto the brown cardboard which is a little bit dull. So you could colour in all of these fan blades on the front if you wanted to and you could also, if you've got some coloured card around, you could trace, um, draw around the individual circles onto the coloured card and stick all of those together and then you get a nice coloured jet engine. Um, I would encourage you to make as many of these as you want to, put them all over the house, I'm sure your parents will be thrilled. <laughs> but I hope that you've really enjoyed today's session, I have, it's been a lot of fun. If you would like to ask me any questions, I will be joining you for a live question and answer session at half past three today, so be sure to come back for that if you want to. If you have any questions or you want to learn a bit more about Rolls-Royce, have a look at the website at www.rolls-royce.com. And the other thing that I need to mention is that on these sheets, it's got the old um, hashtag on it. So we're not using this um, hashtag RRSTEM anymore. We're actually using hashtag Rolls-Royce STEM, but I'll put that on the screen as well. So if you want to share some of your 3D printed jet engines with us, please get an adult to put a picture of you and the jet engine onto Twitter and then use the hashtag Rolls-Royce STEM, um, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag on there and we'll be sure to see them. Thank you very much for joining me again. My name is Holly Davies and I hope to see you soon.